Hi, welcome to our video education session on fats. My name is Janice Hawley and I'm one of the registered dietitians in the cardiac rehabilitation program at St. Mary's General Hospital. My role in the program is really to help to translate the scientific evidence so that you feel empowered and confident in your ability to make the simplest, easiest, heart healthy food choices every day. So thank you for allowing me to join you in your journey as you take ownership towards lifelong heart health. Just before I go through our outline for today, I would like to mention that the information I'm sharing is specifically designed for those individuals that are participating in our cardiac rehab program. So if you're not part of our program, then always check with your physician or your primary healthcare practitioner before embarking on any change. So why should we care about fats? We'll take a look at uh, the, the fat story and we'll take a look at the effects of different fats on our blood cholesterol levels. We'll take a deeper dive into discussion about plant fats, omega-3 fats, saturated fats, trans fats, and as always leave you with some very specific action steps so that you can start practicing and implementing some of these changes that we're talking about. Fats has a very complicated story and a long-standing history. There have been decades and decades of research on dietary fats, particularly saturated fat and its relationship with heart disease. So I will try to disentangle some of that misinformation and, and confusion that's out there with regards to dietary fat. And just want to say right up front that bottom line, too much fats, particularly saturated and trans, increase your risk of developing belly fat. And I'm talking about that deep visceral level of belly fat, the fat that would actually um, surround some of your internal organs. That is going to promote inflammation and is certainly not heart healthy. So we will focus uh, most of our time on those foods that you can have versus what you should be avoiding. A simple divide of foods that contain fat looks like this. So you can see the examples that I have up on the top of this slide really refer to any fresh whole real food version, right? So any food in its original version, as opposed to something that's highly processed, can be part of a healthy diet. So your best sources of the healthiest fats would be from those plant foods, things like oils, nuts, seeds, nut and seed butters. Your best fish sources are in oily fish. And lean animal sources would come from things like lean poultry, lean red meat, lean pork, skimmed milk, dairy foods, and eggs. So at the end of the day, trying to choose fresh whole real foods will always give you healthier fats and trying to avoid highly processed foods will be the heart healthiest way to go. In our discussion about the effects of fat on blood cholesterol, we're going to look at two main types of blood cholesterol, the LDL and the HDL. So LDL, as you can see here, is represented by this yellow circle, and it's often the one that's referred to as the bad cholesterol. So I like to kind of think of the L in LDL as lousy. So the lousy fat or the lousy cholesterol, you want to be the lowest. It actually stands for low density lipoprotein, but um, I think the easiest way to remember is that the L stands for lousy. So you can see what happens when you get too much of this LDL building up in the artery wall. They like to embed themselves on the inside of the wall. And over time that can um, attract more LDL particles, become very, very sticky, and then actually calcifies or hardens over time. So what you end up have happening is you can actually get a narrowing of the artery, as you can see in this picture. So that will impact negatively how well that blood flow can get through the artery. And remember, your blood is supplying oxygenated blood to all your body cells. So that poses problems and is a form of heart disease. The blue circle represents the opposite to the LDL. That's the HDL for high density lipoprotein. We refer to that one as the good cholesterol. And it's because it acts like a transport truck that it's good and it helps to clear out the bad guys. So obviously 
you want to try and have the lowest levels possible of the LDL and have the highest levels possible of your HDL. And we'll take a look now at the specific kinds of fats in your diet that will impart that uh, benefit. So your plant fats are an excellent source of what we call unsaturated fat. So that's usually a liquid oil at room temperature. And why they're so beneficial is they actually help to lower the LDL and protect the HDL. So you remember you want that HDL to stay where it is or to even be raised to go higher. So some specific fats or foods rather that are a rich source of a particular kind of unsaturated fat would be things like olive, avocado, or canola oils, nuts like almonds, pecans, cashews, filberts, and peanuts. You really can't go wrong with nuts, but these are uh, some of the ones that are particularly high in, uh, in a type of unsaturated fat. Seeds, same thing. Any kind of seed is excellent, but pumpkin and sunflower seeds, um, would be a really good go-to for daily use. And all natural nut butters. So things like all natural peanut butter, almond butter, or cashew butter, how you identify that it's a heart healthy all natural version is that when you're looking in the grocery store at the container, you wanna make sure that the oil is separated from the bottom and you actually see that oil separating on top. That's a sign that it's just pure peanuts or pure almonds. Certainly when you get that peanut butter home from the store, flip it upside down in your pantry for about a week, and that will allow that heart healthy unsaturated fat to flow through and distribute more evenly in your peanut butter. Then flip it right side up, give it a stir, store it in the fridge, and you're good to go. Avocado is another excellent food source of these heart healthy unsaturated fats and slicing avocado daily in a salad or a sandwich, chopping it up for salads, or using your overripe avocado in a smoothie or even in a guacamole spread. Those would all be really good, easy ways to incorporate this very healthy source of unsaturated fat. Your omega-3 fats are a subcategory of uh, fat, of unsaturated fat. And you may have heard of the omega-3s. They're very popular in, in the literature, everything that you're reading and hearing about uh, today. The reason that you want more omega-3s is they help to lower the LDL and they also help to lower something else that floats in your blood called triglycerides, just a fancy word for fat that floats in the blood. And so increasing more of these omega-3 sources is very beneficial as well with anti-inflammatory properties and blood thinning properties. And that's all beneficial when it comes to heart health. So looking at a source from things like ground flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, walnuts in particular as um, a nut has an excellent source of omega-3 plant fats. And then you've got your oily fish sources. So sources like salmon, trout, sardines, albacore tuna, mackerel, herring, and anchovies. Those are all excellent ways to increase your daily intake of the omega-3 unsaturated fat. Your target is about 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams of omega-3s per day. And rather than get too overwhelmed with the micromanagement of you know, how many milligrams of omega-3 are in this food and that food, we advise you just to try and have two servings of oily fish per week. And a serving would be equal to about three to five ounces. So if you know what the size of a deck of cards looks like, that's a good visual to have in mind. Um, that's equal to three ounces of cooked fish, for example. So one to two decks of cards a couple of times per week, especially if you can add in two tablespoons of a ground flax seed or whole chia or hemp seeds daily to your cereal or to your yogurt or really anything that you wanna put it in. Um, that would be an excellent way that on the average, on the daily average, you will be targeting your 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams of omega-3s. The opposite to our uh, liquid sourced unsaturated fat would be saturated fat, which is usually a solid at room temperature. And the reason that we want to pay attention and limit saturated fat is because it does have an impact on the LDL cholesterol level and causes it to um, increase. So sources of saturated fat include things like meat fat, your full fat dairy foods, eggs, butter, lard, and coconut oil, 
vegetable shortening, and then any processed food that has been made with vegetable shortening or has been fried, as in fried takeout or restaurant foods, would also be a potential source of saturated fat. Oftentimes I'll get asked uh, the question about differences between butter versus margarine or olive oil versus coconut oil. So I thought putting together this little chart would be very useful. You can see across the top that there's really no difference in terms of calorie level. All of these oils that are based on a tablespoon measure, so we have to use the same measure to compare. So per tablespoon, they all roughly have about 100 calories. Total fat is very similar in the range of 11 to 14 grams per tablespoon. So what differs significantly is the saturated fat. So only two grams in olive oil, 12 grams in coconut oil, seven grams in butter, and 1.5 grams in a non-hydrogenated margarine. A non-hydrogenated margarine means it's made without the use of partially hydrogenated oil, so it won't have any trans fat. So bottom line here is any of these fats can fit in a healthy, balanced diet. However, you do want to pay attention to how much you have, how often you have it, and I would suggest, because of the benefits to your plant oils, like olive oil in particular, and the anti-inflammatory properties that it contains, that that could be your better choice for a daily go-to oil. With coconut oil, there are definitely other types of saturated fat within the oil itself that are not as detrimental to heart health. However, it is still very saturated. At the end of the day, you're trying to minimize your exposure to saturated fat. So at 12 grams per tablespoon, there's not a lot of room for coconut oil on a daily basis. Certainly if you have a recipe that calls for a coconut oil, you want something that gives you that coconut flavor, then for sure use it. Um, but small amounts once in a while would be the recommendation for coconut oil. And when it comes to butter versus margarine, boils down to amount. If you want to try and go for the least processed food, then of course that would be butter over margarine. But once again, at the end of the day, the best choice as a go-to, a primary source, would be a liquid oil, for example, your olive oil. Another very popular question when it comes to saturated fat is in reference to eggs. And um, what I usually like to recommend with eggs is, um, or, or talk about when we're, we're talk, discussing eggs, is that when you isolate any one food or nutrient, like eggs, and don't consider the, the, the entire, the context of your entire diet, that's when you run into problems. So you never want to think of one nutrient or one egg in isolation of all the other things that you're doing over a day, over a week, over you know, months in terms of your eating patterns. So trying to focus on eggs being part of a whole balanced diet that's primarily made up from fresh non-processed foods, there may be room for eggs on a regular basis. However, the egg recommendation is very person-specific versus egg-specific. So it's very hard to generalize. People with diabetes, for example, and heart disease are more prone to inflammation. We know that heart disease is a disease of inflammation. So to make a blanket statement that a certain number of eggs would be fine every day or every week is more challenging. And that's where speaking with a registered dietitian, particularly you know, in a cardiac rehab program, which you have the opportunity to do as a patient in this program, we can, through a telephone consult, go through your particular history, have a, a look at what your daily eating habits are like, and make a more concrete recommendation for you with regards to eggs. We need to have a discussion about trans fat. It's a particularly nasty fat, and you can see that it raises the LDL cholesterol, lowers our HDL cholesterol, and it's very pro-inflammatory, so it promotes inflammation. It's a man-made fat, so you can see by this picture that you produce man-made or artificial trans fat by taking a liquid vegetable oil, literally adding in hydrogen, or hydrogen through the process of hydrogenation, 
and then you produce this um, solid spreadable kind of fat. So it has been used for decades. It has always been a cheaper fat, um, prolongs the shelf life in your processed foods. And there's no doubt that it does impart a certain texture and taste to processed foods. But because of the detrimental effects that trans fat, man-made trans fat has had on heart health over the decades, Health Canada banned it back in September of 2018 with a phase out, a complete phase out by 2020, by September of 2020. And so that's good news. And um, other good news is that there is a global target to ban the man-made trans fat used within the food industry worldwide by the year 2023. So although you're not as exposed, well, you're not exposed nowadays if you live in Canada to trans fat in processed foods, um, but it is still uh, could potentially be a source in your food if you consume a lot of highly processed fried restaurant foods or takeout foods. Because what happens to that liquid vegetable oil is when it's exposed to high, high temperatures, as you'd find in an industry or restaurant setting, and reused over and over again as what would happen in a, again, in a, a day or, um, well, in a, even a 24 hour period in a restaurant setting, then you will be exposing yourself potentially to trans fat from that source. We also need to discuss what natural trans fat is. So this is very different than the discussion that we've just had on the artificial or man-made trans fat. And natural trans fat occurs in all ruminant animals. So foods from ruminant animals like cattle or sheep will have very small amounts of this naturally occurring trans fat. So it will appear in very small amounts in your full fat milk, yogurt, cheese, your fatty meats. It is not as detrimental to heart health, but it's still advisable for optimal health to make wise selections when you are choosing your dairy foods and your meat. So going for the lowest fat uh, choices, so your 0% milk fat or 1% milk fat when you're having milk, yogurt, for example, and choosing your leanest cuts of meats. Both of these strategies will expose you the least to the saturated fat and therefore to hardly any naturally occurring trans fat at all. So what are some very specific action steps that you can take? And I've got a long list here. You don't want to overwhelm yourself and try to make changes and add in, you know, multiple things overnight. So be kind to yourself. Take the approach where maybe you're going to focus on one of these, whatever resonates with you as being the easiest and simplest to do. Start with that, get used to that over four or five or six weeks, and then go on to another uh, strategy or goal and so on. So for example, maybe your go-to right off the bat would be to choose uh, about two tablespoons of an extra virgin olive oil or canola or avocado oil daily. Using it in cooking at the table when you make your homemade salad dressings. Um, and uh, that would be a, a good way to start. If you are using the extra virgin olive oil in cooking, just keep the temperature low to medium. It doesn't like a lot of heat. It's not good for any oil to overexpose it to heat. But in your own home kitchen, using a couple of tablespoons to saute, you know, vegetables, for example, in a, in a pan at a low to moderate or medium temperature is going to be fine. And as I said, it's a great oil to use in a homemade salad dressing. Adding in a quarter of a cup, which equals about 30 to 45 grams of a variety of different nuts daily would be a great way to incorporate healthy fats. In fact, Dr. David Jenkins, he's a very prominent researcher at University of Toronto, he likes to refer to nuts as the best cholesterol lowering pill out there. And uh, nuts, as we've discussed, have that heart healthy unsaturated fat. They're also an excellent source of fiber and plant protein, so very beneficial to include on a daily basis. Two tablespoons of seeds daily would be another great way to incorporate these unsaturated fats in your yogurt, on your cereal. 
trying to incorporate three to five ounces of an oily fish one or two times per week. Also another initial goal that you might find is, is easy for you. Adding something in, by the way, versus taking away something old is just a great way to start that whole process of behavior change. We know from research and behavior change, it's much easier for you to add in something new versus take away old. So just get that fish in there. It will naturally displace maybe your everyday red meat and um, it's just going to be easier for you. Smaller portions of lean protein, maybe getting those down to under three servings per week, that really helps to minimize your exposure, exposure to too much saturated fat. And also, as I just said, makes room for the fish option. Using lower fat dairy products, either a 0% or 1%, and of course, more plant-based whole foods. We can't emphasize this enough. And in fact, probably every uh, video that, we, that we've produced and recorded for you on our website, that um, is nutrition based, we will always talk about plant based whole foods. And of course, that leads quite nicely into our takeaway message for today. I don't expect that you're going to remember most of what I've said. In fact, even if you just have one key takeaway word from our 20 minute discussion now on fat, that word could be fresh. So choosing fresh, whole, real foods, whether you're in a restaurant setting, whether you're at home, whether you're in the grocery store, if you can focus on fresh, whole, real foods, that will serve you very well in trying to minimize your exposure to saturated fat and just too much fat in general. So thank you again for joining us today. Please do check out the other videos I've mentioned or referred to on our website. And if you feel that you could benefit from a telephone consult with a registered dietitian in our program, then please go back to the website, look at the contact information, reach out, give us a call, and we would be happy to book that appointment for you so that we can do a deeper dive into your personal history your personal eating habits and set up some very individual goals that are going to be um, meet you where you're at and are going to make this a much easier process. So thanks again, have a great day and we'll see you next time.